there is somebody I want to show you. So today we are doing something a little bit different to start out with. I did go out and forage and get some fresh mullein and I did uh, harvest some of my lemon balm, my peppermint, chamomile, um, one more, calendula. I have harvested some herbs that I need to go ahead and get dried so that I can make tea out of them. So I'm going to freeze dry these herbs. Now, there's not been a lot of studies done on freeze drying herbs, but I have seen a comparison. Somebody, a friend of mine named Cindy, Cindy did freeze dry some herbs and she also dehydrated some herbs. The dehydrated herbs totally lost their shape, their color, their size. They just shriveled up and looked kind of dead. So I don't know that their nutrients were still there. I'm not sure. There's not been a lot of what I've studied on that. But the freeze dried herbs looked so beautiful. It was just like they went in, except that they were light and crispy and um, completely dried when they come out. So I have started the freeze dryer. It's getting ready. I've got my herbs in the freezer on the trays being pre-frozen. So we are going to freeze dry some herbs so that I can go ahead and put them in jars and make tea in the evenings. Isn't that wonderful? Well, it's the next day and I have got some stuff ready that I took out of the freeze dryer. You know, yesterday I put in some fresh herbs. So let's see how they came out. Okay, so here are the calendula flowers. They're just very dry. They look exactly like they went in. All right, so this is, and I know I didn't fill it up, but I just kind of wanted to see how it would turn out. And this is the fresh sage. Mmm, it smells so good. Okay, this is peppermint. I'm going to crush it. And smell it. Mmm, that does smell good. This is chamomile flowers, and this is lemon balm. So let's crush it. Ooh, it smells just like lemons. All right, so calendula flowers, lemon balm, chamomile, peppermint, and broadleaf sage. So let's put it in some jars. Okay, so um, I want to show you what it looks like. I kind of got it crushed. It didn't make a whole lot in this little jar, but that's because I didn't do a whole lot. I just kind of wanted to see what the results would be. And this is very fragrant. When I crushed it, it just become very fragrant. And I had very little sage on that tray. So um, I am going to do another batch today. Um, here's the chamomile and the peppermint. Yeah, I did more peppermint than anything, that and lemon balm. And also I have the calendula that I'm gonna be adding the sweet oil to, to make some calendula oil. So, yeah, so I'm, I've gotten started now and um, I'm really happy with the outcome of freeze drying the herbs. They're gonna make great teas. Now, I do have some here. I have some bee balm. I have not crushed it and this is catnip. This is mullein, first year plant, and this is yarrow. So those I will be working with, those were given to me from another friend, Cindy. 
and these are freeze dried. She does have a freeze dryer. So the only thing that I'm doing is putting a desiccant in there for long-term storage um, or yeah, until I make teas or whatever with it. So I am making mullen tincture, which is good for respiratory issues. And I've got two jars of mullen that I went to the back field and was able to get. Um, and it is a second year plant. And so I just kind of um, cut the leaves up really good and then put vodka over it, 100 proof. No, we're not gonna drink that. That is just for the tincture. Um, which you can see how it's absorbed some of the vodka already. So I've got to add some more up to the top. And this will be ready in about six weeks. So today I'm gonna shake it. I'm keeping it in a dark, dry place. I'm gonna shake it up really good and add a little more vodka, shake it up some more. And we'll do this every day for about six weeks. All right, so let's go and feed Candace. And there is somebody I want to show you. Candace. Here she comes. She's ready for her bottom. You sure are getting, you sure are getting feisty. You sure are a pretty girl. Yes, you are. You're getting such good color. Okay, y'all don't fuss at me. Um, Ooh, Candace, watch out. Y'all don't fuss at me. I don't have a hat on, but I haven't been out in the sun today. I have been doing some housekeeping today, and I just came out to finish up this video. Uh, you know, I've been in there doing the freeze drying the herbs and such, but um, did some did some house cleaning today, and it's a little cloudy out, so I wanted to take this opportunity to come out and to introduce you to one of the newest members of the farm. Okay, y'all, y'all know that one of the new projects that we had going on was Tony's project. And I told you that his project turned out very, very good. Well, Tony was building an enclosure for something that Brooke and Jason over at Cogdill Farms was given to Tony. Now, this is Tony's gift from Cog Hill Farm because he has been wanting this for a very, very long time. And he was so excited and he was so excited to get the project finished. But y'all, can y'all see that right there? Let me turn the camera around. So Brooke and Jason brought Tony a pair of peacocks. Now we have not named them yet, or I have not named them. I'm waiting on Tony to name uh, this pair. And y'all can give, <laughs> will you hush? And y'all can give suggestions because he has not told me what the names are yet. So um, y'all can give suggestions on what you think the name should be. <laughs> Look at that man. He is a mess over there. So Tony built the enclosure for the peacocks, the pair, and um, he even built them a roost. And let me show you the roost. It is way up there. Can y'all see that? 
So there's another new thing at G and G Farm. So now we have peacocks. So we've got to wait about six weeks before we can. Jeez, we got to wait about six weeks before we can let them out to play on the farm and to free range. And hopefully, hopefully she will be a good girl, and she will lay us some peacock eggs. So look at here, y'all. What is that? I want you guys to meet Sophie. Sophie is the newest member of G, &G Farms, and she has already learned her roles here. So let's go have a look. Hey, silly girl. Hey, silly girl. Oh, look at the silly girl. Let's look at the silly girl. Yes. Her is a silly girl. She is so playful and so loving. She's a year old. Hey, baby, come on. And she just, she knows her role. Look, she's taking care of Candace. She's a good girl. Let's go, let's go up here and sit and talk. Let's go up here and sit and talk. So we still have Dixie. Dixie's there. Dixie's a little tired today. Her's a little tired. She and uh, Sophie have been playing all morning. <laughs> but Sophie is a little bit younger than Dixie. And here's the thing. You see how Bo interceded right there? He always does. Because Dixie is his dog. And he is Dixie's goat. And he thinks that nothing else can get around Dixie. So I have a problem. It's not really a problem, but he doesn't like Sophie to play with Dixie. He'll get in between them every time. So Dixie, Dixie wants to play sometimes and can't because Bo won't let her. He's so jealous. Those two are best friends. When we first got our first goat, of course, of course, Bo was it. And it was just Bo and Dixie for a long time. So they became best friends. And Bo loves Dixie. Look, see how he lays his head on her? He loves Dixie. I have never seen such a relationship in my life. About like Hut Hut and Nellie. That's the strange relationship. But this one, this one takes the cake. Sweet babies. Sophie's trying to get up here and Bo was getting in between her so that she couldn't get up here. Okay, so Sophie is a little over a year old and just so loving. She's so loving. Yes, she is. And so she just happened to come the other day when Dr. D was here. So Dr. D went ahead and gave her vaccinations and he, he did everything he needed to do and check her out um, because she just happened to arrive at the same time that Dr. D did. So that was a really good thing. But Sophie has a story and Sophie had lived with a, a little friend of mine that um, she went to live with her at eight weeks old and she had, she'd had her ever since. And Sophie needed a job. Um, you know, things happen in our life and sometimes, you know, sometimes you just have to, um, go in different directions. And so Sophie needed a home. Sophie also needed a home that had a job for her to do and this little friend of mine did not want her to go anywhere but G&G Farms. Well it just so happened that we were looking into getting a another livestock guardian dog to help Dixie defend the farm because I really don't think that Dixie would be able to defend 
by herself. She just, you know, she's just not cut out for that kind of a job. Y'all see what I've got crawling on me? <laughs> Candice is crawling on me. Candice, say hey. <laughs> and now we've got Lily. Lily's a little bigger. <laughs> I can't sit and talk around goats. <laughs> They're going to be in my lap. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. You're on me. You hurt me. Okay, so. Hi, Lily. Hi, Lily. Trooper's back there, too. Hey, Trooper. Trooper. Oh, Trooper's pulling my hair. Hang on. Okay, I may have to move. Trooper, ow. And Candace, are you biting me? Oh Lord, here comes Spice. Ow, Trooper. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop, Trooper. <laughs> Dixie took care of it. <laughs> Dixie, was he hurting you? <laughs> a little growl from Dixie and things will cool down. Maybe. I don't know. They've kind of got her bullied too. <laughs> this is every day. Ow! Trooper, stop! This is every day. Only there's eight of them. Eight babies. That all get on you at one time. I had to change clothes already because they got on my back earlier when I was bent over. <laughs> they just hop up there. But anyway, back to Sophie. Sophie um, has already adjusted. The first day um, when she came to us after she got her vaccinations uh, with Dr. D, um, that evening I put her into a stall. And she slept in the stall that night, and I let her out the next day, and she ran and played, and um, she was trying to adjust to the farm. Sorry, these goats are rocking my camera. Um, and the next night, I put her back in the stall, and on the third night, I let her stay out in the pasture. And I'm going to tell you, she ran something off. I heard her when she's started barking but she has got this really huge deep voice and she knew her job she was walking the perimeter of the fence and she had ran something off now I don't know that it wasn't a deer because Dixie never made a sound um, because Dixie's used to the deer but Sophie's not yet now, the deer do come to the pond back there, but, um, you know, they, they may just have to get used to Sophie and Sophie get used to them. Um, so, still working on the fence back there. I think we've pretty much got it completed. Now, I just got to get in here. And, now, I just got to get in here and clean up our mess. I've got a pole, a post laying there that I've got to get out of here. But I really need to just drive the side-by-side -side in here and clean up. So I've got to do that when I've got everybody in a stall eating. But I wanted to show you and introduce you to Sophie. Now, Sophie is, Sophie's over there. She's pretty much uh, just doing her job. She is a playful, playful girl. But when it comes to her job, she takes it very seriously. She can change from one minute to the next, from playful to I'm very serious. And if I smell something, I'm going to make sure that it doesn't come around here. So I think that Sophie and G&G &G Farms are going to make an excellent team. And I am so excited that Sophie is here. She is such a good girl. Now, Sophie is not spayed yet, 
but Sophie will be getting spayed. I talked to Dr. D about that also. She is gonna be getting spayed in the next month, probably, or two. Um, we were trying to give her a little bit of extra time to let her bones grow and hormones adjust. So, um, she will be, she will be the greatest addition to G&G &G Farms. Okay, hey guys. So, um, I ran out of hay and I found a young man that does hay just right up the road for me. I'm so excited. So, we came to get a load of hay for the goats and Nellie today. And I just kind of want to show you how we got all this hay in just a matter of minutes. But first, let me introduce you to him. Okay, so we're here with Mr. Daniel Thornton. He nice is the driver of this big machine here. And um, so tell me how old you said you were. 29. 29, guys, yes, look at him. He is in some Liberty overalls. <laughs> and so when I drove up and saw him, uh, you know, it just brought back memories of when I was a kid and how I grew up. And so I just, I really wanted to get him on camera today and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, ma'am. Like, like you asked, I'm 29 years old. I've, uh, I've grew up here in Chilton County, uh, Alabama, but uh, this is one of, uh, one of my hay fields right here. Uh, as you can see, we square belled this field. Uh, we're about to start picking them up and putting them on the trailer. Okay, so uh, can I watch you uh, pick oh, some yes, up and put some on the yes, trailer? All right, let's go. This is how it's done. Better move.
So you said your dad built that piece of equipment? Yes, ma'am. It don't it doesn't work perfect for putting them on the trailer, but it does make it a whole lot easier. Oh, absolutely. When I was a kid, we had to drive the truck around the field and throw it up to somebody. Yes, ma'am. That's the that's the hard way right there. And you said you have two children? Yes, ma'am. I have a three year old and a two and a half year old. Awesome. Or a three and a half year old and a two year old. About the right. You want to say hey to your children? Yeah, say uh, hey to your children. Hey Brixton, hey Marlo. <laughs> How about your wife? Say hey to your wife. Hey, hey Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so very much for letting us watch and uh, for actually selling us some hay today. Oh, you're welcome. And this is as fresh as you can get. I mean, straight out of the field. Yes, So thank you again. Oh, you're welcome. Y'all have a good day. So hey y'all, we just got back from getting hay. We've got it unloaded. We've got it stacked in the brooder house. So I ended up bringing home 16 bales of hay today. So uh, the goats have hay. Um, Nellie and Hut Hut has hay. Everybody is happy and we're tired. So now it's time to go in, chill out and get ready for, well, you know what? Evening chores. So. We're still not done. We still got to cook dinner and do evening chores. <laughs> but for right now, y'all farm on.